Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To God our Savior be our glory again. Yeah, it's a pleasure to see you. It's a pleasure to meet you again. And to speak to us again. To share the word of God and word of life with us. It's a pleasure again. To God be all the glory. Amen. Shall we pray together? Lord, we want to bless you and praise you. We want to worship you. Daddy, we want to exalt and glorify and magnify your name. You highly lifted up. No one is to be compared with you, ancient of the days. Daddy, your word is coming forth right now. Let the power of that word come forth now. Let the glory of your word come forth right now. Let the blessedness of your word come forth right now. And let the people hear the word of God. And let the word of God bring transformation into their lives, O Lord. Let the word of God, O Lord, come and change every situation in their life, O God. Father, those souls that are meant for the kingdom of God, let them receive this message in any part of the world they are right now. O God, whether they're hearing me directly now or they will listen later, O God, let them... This message look away look away oh god to send this message to their life so that they will listen and they will see favor they will see mercy they will see glory of god in the name of jesus christ to you alone be the glory lord we bless and praise you jesus mighty name we pray amen it is uh, hallelujah i want to say thank you so much for those of you that have been encouragement to us, for those of you that have been calling us, those of you that have been advertising the message of the kingdom, those of you that have been preaching the word of God and word of life, oh, thank you so much. Don't think that what you're doing is light for God. Go ahead doing it. Go ahead doing it. A man told me he was sharing this message and sharing this message, and the devil spoke to him and said, the message you're sharing is not your message. Why are you then sharing it? The man said, he started laughing and told the devil and said, Devil, yeah, it is the message of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the King and God alone, our Savior. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for those of you God have been using to talk to us, share with us, encourage us. Many have been calling. Since we've been receiving call round about countries of Asia, countries of uh, North America, uh, South America, African countries, Europe. I mean, I mean, I mean, we've been receiving messages all over and all over. Thank you so much. God is touching lives. I begin to receive testimonies from a lot of people. And I encourage you, you can share your testimony with us. Many have come and shared their testimony of what God is doing in their lives. All you needed to do is just cue in into this system. Just cue in into the word of God. Cue in into the move of God. Cue in into the move of holiness. Cue in into the move of righteousness. And you will see your life that has been messed up will be a life that will be renewed and transformed. I'm speaking to believers. I'm speaking to children of God. I'm speaking to children of light right now. Yeah. Bless you, my beloved. Bless you. The topic I want us to discuss tonight says, Be you transformed. It's a command. Be you transformed. Every child of God. My prayer says that as you are hearing this message, the Lord will transform you. The Lord said, be you transformed. It is because you've not been transformed. That's why a lot of things are happening in your life. But the moment you are transformed, oh my God, the moment you are transformed, you discover that electricity cannot shock electricity. Oh my God, by the time you become transformed, you become a spiritual electricity and you flow as a current for Jehovah Lord. Any ugly situation, you will shock the situation and not the situation shocking you. Be you transformed, be you transformed, be you transformed, be you transformed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's the topic we're talking about today. Be you transformed. It's a command from Jehovah Shalom. It's a command from the mighty man of valor. Be you transformed. That's our topic of today. Be you transformed. All right, so as we're talking about being transformed, let's get to Romans chapter 12 from verse number 1. That is why we are taking our test right now. Romans 12 from verse number 1. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this world. He said, Be not conformed to this world. The Bible said, Yes. He said, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. Woo! Whenever you are transformed, you are looking up. You are no more looking down. Looking down is full of trouble, full of problem. It's when you look down, you see your problem. When you look down, you see ugly situation. When you look down, you see people who, who have gossip with your name. People who have spoiled your name. People who have mash on your leg. People who have mash on your toe. People who have mash on your ego. Oh, <laughs> but when you are transformed, you are always looking up unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. When you are transformed, you are always looking up, 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 and above there to the glory. Your hope, where your hope coming from? You are looking where your confidence coming from. You are looking up where your help is coming from. That means you are being transformed. You are no more on the world level. Oh my God, oh my God. You are living above. Your spirit, every supply you have is coming from above because you have been transformed. Bible says, verse 2, Romans 12, verse 2 said, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That means it is only people who have been transformed can do the will of God. He said, I want to do the will of God. God, help me to do your will. God, how can you do the will of God when you are not transformed? No, it takes you to be transformed before the will of God will come upon your life. God, I want to be used. Then he said, oh, son, daughter, before I will use you, I want you to be transformed. And you have been struggling with God. Tonight, I release the power of transformation unto you, that you shall be transformed. And the glory of Jesus will come upon you. Hallelujah. Then when we mean the word transform, the word transform means also to transfigure. That means your image being turned to the image of Jesus of Nazareth. Transfigure, the glory of God coming upon you. That's what the word, ba 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 ba. Hey, remember, ma 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 ma. The glory of Jesus, the glory of Jesus, the glory of Jesus. The glory of Jesus is here. The power of Jesus is here tonight. The power is looking for who to transform. The power is looking for available vessel. The power is looking for an open vessel. The power is looking for whosoever, any man, any woman, from any part of the world. Despite your age, all God needed is willingness tonight. If you can say, Lord, here am I, here am I. I want transformation. I need transformation. I desire transformation. I want to be a voice for my generation. God, God, I am that man. I am that woman. I am the person you've been looking for oh god i need a transformation in my life the moment you desire this the moment you speak this the moment you say this you will see jehovah lord coming upon your life walking in your life transforming your life and all the chaps the extra loads you have in your life will be burnt off by the fire of the lord so when we mean the world trans to, to transform it means uh, you know it's a be you transform it means to transfigure yes another language transfigure it means also to metamorphose, changing, changing for better, changing, you know, or undergoing a, ch a complete change under the power of God. That's what it means. Undergoing a complete change. How can you be a born again and a child of God? Before you got born again, you were a person known for anger. And today you are still living in anger. Before you got born again, you were known as a person that lived in different life. You were known as this and that and that. And then it began to, the essence in you, the essence is has not been burnt. The essence in you need to be burnt off. Look, let me tell you, the transformation fire is a mighty fire. The moment it born, it changes you. The moment it born, the, 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 the chaff will go. The ones you don't need will go. It will begin to renew you and transform you into gold and you'll be brightened every day even if you're gold already and the transformation power meets you you will be brighter and brighter and brighter again that's what we're talking about be you transform be you transformed is a command from the lord jesus christ the lord is looking for that man that will say god i need your transformation for that woman that will say god i need that transformation i want to be transformed of the lord i don't want to remain the same i don't want to be that liar i am known as i don't want to remain that lord, person that live in law that i'm known for i don't want to remain that man that woman i've been known for years no 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 change i want to be like be the, 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 the power of god i want to see the to me the bible the word of god say be you transform transform the bible is talking about be you transform 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 
I can see God. I can see a healing heart tonight. I can see a healing man, a healing woman who is saying, God, for how long will I live uselessly here on earth? For how long will I be useless? You are looking for a worker. You are looking for who to employ. You are looking for that man to work. Lord, I want to be that person. I want to be that man. I want to be that woman who will go from places to places for you. Who will be your mouthpiece, oh God? Who will be the hand you will use? Who will be the mind, the, 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 the mind you use in thinking? Oh God, transform somebody tonight. And let somebody never remain the same. Let the glory of God come upon somebody tonight. That the mercy of Jesus shall be seen upon somebody. And somebody will laugh tonight and say, hey, 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 hey. I am the one God had in mind. I am the one God is talking about. I am the he, I am the her. That's what God is looking for tonight. Be you transformed. Be you transformed tonight. When you are transformed, you have a deeper knowledge. Two things will happen instantly. The moment transformation glory, the moment transformation mystic of God come upon you. Two things will happen. Number one is that there will be a change in character. Your character will automatically change. Hey, you know how she behaves so. If she hear this thing from you, she will be annoyed though. She will find somebody. Though. But because you've been transformed and you hear it is mine. And when they say what, they say, oh, things have passed away. All things has become new because I'm a transformed person. The former me would have been annoyed with you. But the transformed me, the in me that is like Jesus of Nazareth, will he not pick offense because of what? I know in whom I believe. I know the changes have come upon my life. We are talking about be you transformed. The glory of God is touching somebody tonight. The mercy of God is coming upon somebody tonight. And the Lord said, can you get transformed? Can you be transformed? Are you among the people that I want to transform tonight? Are you among the people that will say, God, transform me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, let me tell you. When you are satisfied of where you are already with God, the transformation I'm talking about is not for you. But when you are thirsty, when you are hungry, when you are saying, oh my God, I am that man, I am that woman. I am that person, oh God. Transform me, transform me. Transform me, transform me. Oh God, let every useless part of me, God burnt, and let the good part of me, the essence load I've been carrying, let it go, let it go. That's the transformation we're talking about. When you look in inside of yourself and say, Say, no, I am empty. When you look up and say, no, I have not reached my sky. I have not reached to, my, to where I want to go. Oh, God. When you look down and say, I'm still down. I remove my eye from looking down. I remove my eye from looking aside. Well, I will only look up unto Jesus. The author and finisher of my faith. That's the transformation we're talking about. God is looking for that man. God is looking for that woman to transform. Number one thing that will happen is that the moment you are transformed, there will be change in character. That inside of you, something has happened inside of you. And after that, there will be change in your conduct. There will be change in your conduct immediately. That means the outside of you equally. Inside and outside, there will be change in you. Your dressing will change. Everything about you will change. People will look at you and say, what happened? Don't you see when Peter was transformed? The way he was speaking, the way the glory of God came upon him, the way he was blowing, you know, boldly speaking. They said, is this not a feature man? Uh -uh. I know him. He's a feature man. He didn't go to school. He was a Galilean. Is this not Peter again? What happened? What is the secret of Peter? And what was the secret? Jesus of Nazareth. The people said, he has been with Jesus. Woo! He has been with the man that transforms life. He has been with life itself. Look, let me tell you. If you are with life itself, Jesus of Nazareth, the moment your life got short, he will refill you to bring. And you will live in overflowing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight, as I'm preaching the word of God to you, depending on what part, what part of the country you are, if you're in Europe, uh, in Europe, yes, tonight. If you're in the United States of America, I know it's your afternoon. Okay, so signs of a transformed life. You may ask yourself, am I transformed? These are signs of transformed life. I'm going to teach you and tell you what it means, the transformed life. Look into your life. The moment you begin to see these things, you begin to know if your life is transformed or if your life is not transformed. But if your life is not transformed, don't just keep quiet. Begin to cry. Begin to look unto him. Begin to tell him, Lord, I need your transformation. I need your transformation. I need your transformation. I need your transformation. I need this transformation. Me, that as I'm talking, I need this transformation every day. I want God to transform me. 
I need this glorious transformation every day of my life. Okay? Number, I will tell you eight signs of transformation. Eight signs of transformation. Number one sign. You will come to yourself. The moment transformation glory, the moment transport, trans, transformation vis, uh, uh, visitation of God comes on you, you will come to yourself. That will be number one. That will be the first thing that is going to happen to you. You will come to yourself. Look at what happened in the book of Luke chapter 15, verse 17 to 19. You will come to yourself. Luke chapter 15, verse 17 to 19. And the Bible said, And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. Verse 18. I will arise and go to my father. I will listen to him, Father. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He, you will come to yourself. You will say, what am I doing? Why am I messing up? What is really wrong? Who did this sin to me? That is what transformation can do. You will come to yourself. I pray you come back to yourself. You have been begged. You have been pleaded. Somebody has pleaded with you. This person offended you. Forgive. He said, me? This is the, my husband. How can I forgive this man that did this to me? We suffer together. When we get money now, he went and picked a younger girl and they're eating my money. He shall not be well with him. He will suffer. He will die like a dog. He will die a stupid death. Hey, why? Are you a transformer? You, uh, you, when you are transformed, God will not only transform you, he will transform you and make you a transformer so that you transform other lives. Don't you hear, see electric transformer? It gets its power from high tension. Oh, and then begin to distribute light. So the moment you are transformed, you become a light distributor. And Jesus said you are the light of the world. So number one thing is that the moment you are transformed, you will come back to yourself. You will come to your senses. You will come to understanding. You will say, oh, the prodigal son say, hey, who did this thing to me? I am from a rich family. Why am I sharing food with pigs? No, no. Transformation will make it to come back to your senses. It will make it to come back to your originality. The real you in you. The real you that God created. But when you are not transformed, you will move in your own way with anger, with provocation, with hatred, with gossip, with every manner of sin. It will lead you to hell and destruction. But the moment you begin to hear the word of God, the moment you come back to yourself, I decree you listening to me now, may you come back to yourself. May you come back to yourself. In any aspect of your life that you have not fully come back, may you come back right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may you fully come back right now. It could be that small quarreling, that small misunderstanding between you and your husband. I said, come back now. It could be that be, be small misunderstanding, that small compromise you have been doing every day and you are being paid. You said they are having a fast salary and you are compromising. Come back. May the Lord draw you back and bring you back to himself now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number two. Oh my God. The moment, remember I said number one, is that you will come to yourself. You will come back to yourself. You will come back to your senses. You will come back to your understanding. You will come back to your reasonings. Number two. You will judge yourself. Jay. The, when you are not transformed, you will be judging others. You will be seeing fault in others. You will be seeing what others are doing. But you will not see the one you are doing. No. Your eyes will be blinded on yourself, but your eyes will be open on that. You become a judge instead of a brother. You become a judge instead of a sister. You become a instead of a, a lover of, of work of God and the lover in the things of God. You become a judge. But the moment your eyes is open, you say, Hey! you will judge yourself. Look at what happened in Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah was prophesying. Read Isaiah chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Isaiah was saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa unto you. Whoa unto you. But the moment he had encounter with Jehovah, the moment he had that visitation, the moment he had that transformation, look at what Isaiah said. In the year that the king Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord seated upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his strength filled the temple. 
above it, the seraphim, each one has six wings. With twain, he covered his face, and with twain, he covered his feet, and with twain, he did fly. You see, it, is, it was only when Uzziah died that he saw the glory of God. I don't know who is the Uzziah of your life. I don't know who is covering you. I don't know who is covering you from seeing the glory and mercy of God. I don't know who is covering you from seeing the reality of God. I don't know who is deceiving you, who blindfolded your eyes. Isaiah could not talk to God directly. He could not pray and seek the face of the Lord to start with himself. He, because Uzziah was there. Uzziah was providing money. Uzziah was providing everything. Isaiah felt less concerned. But he said, he only yeah, Uzziah died. I don't know who your Uzziah might be. But I pray any man, any woman that is hindering you from seeing the glory, power of God, let him or she be off your way so that you will see God. You will experience God. Many people thought they are born again because they are in the church. No, you must have God. God must visit you experientially. You remember the day and the day, the hour, the minute you got born again. That is what it means to have personal knowledge of Jesus as Lord and Savior. We are talking about transformation. God is transforming somebody tonight. You are not listening to this message by accident. You are listening to this message because God wants to do something in your life. You are listening to this message because God wants to transform your life. May your life be transformed. May your life be transformed tonight. Let that anger provocation, let that, let that, let that hatred, let that gossip, let that envious life get out of your life. Let your life be transformed. As I'm talking now, let the light of God, the light of transformation begin to burn in outside of you that the glory of God will come and you will never remain the same and his hand and power will walk upon you and his goodness will walk upon you hallelujah so that his glorious mercy will walk upon you his great favor will walk upon you his mighty hand will walk upon you hallelujah look at what the other verse said as I have been saying, whoa, 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 unto people. Remember, I'm talking about transformation. Be you transformed. God wants to quicken you that you live in under the unction and power of transform, uh, transformed life. Woo! Under transformed life, bullet has no right to apply. It is only when you are transformed that you can say, no, we performed against me that you are prosper. Because you have been transformed. You are living the life of the spirit. No physical uh, uh, apply, apply, application on earth here will affect your life. Because the glory of God is upon you. How can you say, no, we performed against me when you're having a weapon against yourself? Let me tell you, brother, sister, if no, we performed against you, you shall prosper. The weapon you form against yourself is going to prosper. God said, no, we performed against you. The one somebody formed against you, but what of the one you're forming against yourself? Yes, what, that, what, what of that your heart you have closed up? God, I will not do it. Even if God comes down, I will not do it. Hey, why are you making that stupid statement? Over my dead body. Hey, why are you saying that? God can allow you to die and the thing will be happened. This thing shall be done over my dead body. Somebody told the man of God. And the man of God was a radical. He said, this thing cannot happen over my dead body. And the man of God said, amen. With this and with, the man died. And the man of God went and did what he was doing. Hey, over my dead body is a bad spiritual English. Don't use it there. Yeah? Don't use it for any reason. Be, learn how to be transformed so that the glory of Jesus will come upon. Look at what happened in verse 3. And the one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the Bible, the word of God said, they were crying. Look at what happened verse 4. And the post, okay. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. Uh, yes. And the, uh, uh, and the house was filled with what? Smoke. Then I, I said, Isaiah and I came to himself. So such glory exists. So such power manifests. Look at what Isaiah said. Then said I, woe unto me. He began to judge himself. Have you judged yourself? The Bible said, judge yourself that you will not be judged. Many people are not judging themselves. That is why they are failing prey. That is why they are seeing problems. That's why they are seeing trouble. That's why they are seeing pains. But when you judge yourself, you will not be judged. When you examine yourself and say, God, judge me, that I will not be judged. <laughs> Look at what happened. The, 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 then said, I woe unto me, for I am a man, for I am undone. Hey, I know Jai, no. I am not among them that is going to heaven, no. I didn't know this, so. So this morning would have hindered me. I was busy seeing fault in people. I was busy. Instead of start seeing fault in me, when you correct the fault in you, God will give you grace to talk to others and correct the, the, the fault in their life. In love. In love. In love. The Bible says, you have not removed a, a, a block in your eyes and you want to remove a speck in the eyes of another. 
a transformed life is what we're talking about. Then said I verse 5, Woe unto me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king. Woo! The Lord of hosts. May your eyes see the king. May your eyes see the king today. May your eyes see the king himself. May your eyes see the glory of God himself. May your eyes see the mighty hand of God. May your eyes see the glory of God today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, verse 6, and having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongue from the fire. Uh, verse 7, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy mouth, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Isaiah thought he was called, though. It was only when his sins were purged. It was only when iniquity, impurity, and unrighteousness left him that he had the voice of God. You are not hearing God because something is blocking you and God. Can't you say, God, transform me? Look, let me tell you. If you can yield your life from this moment for transformation, that thing that is between you and your God shall be bound by the fire of glory. And the wall, we, wall of hindrances will collapse. And immediately you begin to hear Jehovah talking. You hear him sometimes, you don't hear him sometimes. But when, in that experience I had, by the time the Lord took me up above, he told me, say, I speak to my people daily. I speak to my children often and on. But my people are blocked by a lot of things. My people, what is blocking you? Oh God, this man, this woman, this young man, this, this woman you said you want to use, that is looking at me now, that is listening to this message, that thing, oh God, that is a barrier between you and him, let it collapse and let it be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be transformation in his life. Let every weakness go. You are looking at me. You are watching now. The Lord said, he wakes you up to pray. You become too weak. You say, let me wait a moment. You lie down and you, sleep off again. you slept off again. But today, let there be a quickening power. Let there be a quickening fire. Let there be a quickening glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord says, sometimes I want to stay with my people. But my people are too busy. Number three. Look, let me tell you. It's no man mad. This is natural, supernatural with God. What you call supernatural, God call it natural. Miracle to God is natural. We call it supernatural here because it's above us and it's above our comprehension. But to God, he call it, it's a natural way of living. That is God for you. So we're talking about transformation and the transformed life. As you are listening tonight, or now this moment, may God keep blessing you. May God keep favoring you. May you keep seeing his favor. May you keep seeing his goodness. May you keep seeing his greatness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God is God of love. God is God of understanding. God is God of everything. And look at what happened. The Bible, the word of God said. The Bible, the word of God said. Look at point three. Number one, I said. Signs of transformation or transformed life. Sign of a transformed. Number one, you will come to yourself. Number two, you will judge yourself. You will not be judging others. You will begin to judge yourself. Number three, you will restitute. You will do restitution. Look at what happened to Zechariah in the book of uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 8 to 9. Yes, Luke chapter 19, 8 to 9. And Zechariah stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. If I have taken anything, from any man by force, by false accusation, I restore him for food. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is the son of Abraham. Have you restituted? Have you done restitution? Why did you steal somebody's food? The property of somebody you have is still in your house. And you said you are born again. And you are still talking and clapping hands. The properties that television that set you're using is not yours. It was stolen. Then, it, it, you know how it came. You said, I'm a born again. Which born again? Which heaven are you going to? Except you're going your own with ladder. Except you put ladder and go to your own heaven. If it is heaven, I know that is holy. If it is heaven, I know that is sacred. If it is heaven, I know that is pure. If it is heaven, I know that is only meant for the righteous. There's need for restitution in your life. Yes, those things you did, your wife didn't know. There's need for you to go. Seek a counsel. Discuss with a man of God. Call your wife and say, darling, look at what I did. I broke our marriage vow. On the side of your husband. Let me tell you, I've, I've always told people, it's better you restrict and your husband say, get out. Than, 
You hide it in your heart. Bible says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. If you cover your sin, you go to hellfire. Is it not restitution? Yes. Some of you that are workers, the, 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 you are a civil servant. You go and put your name. This can only happen in African country. You go and write your name, and you have other businesses you are doing. You write your name in the morning, you come in the evening and write your name. <laughs> By receiving unjustified pay. The payment you have received, you didn't work for it. You are a dupe. Better repent now. You can go to a business after the job is over. Be example of brethren. Stop putting Jesus to shame. Stop putting Jesus to shame. Don't compromise anymore. We are talking about be you transformed. I am telling you, when your life is transformed, things will begin to happen. I've given you number one. You will come to yourself. The prodigal son came to himself. You will judge yourself. Yes, Isaiah judged himself. Yes, you will do restitution. Zacchaeus did the restitution. All the people are starting. All the people are taking things from their hand. I'm going to give them back again. Anything you still have, you know how it came. It didn't come in a righteous way. It didn't come in a good way. You took it from that person by fault, by violence, by tree, and by whatever. Some men of God will say, I nah, like this, your food. No. Now, nah, wow, uh, if you just give me this food, eh, God will bless you. I'll pray for double anointing now. Nah. Uh, 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 do you want to give it to me? It is stealing by tricks. God did not call us to steal by tricks. God did not call us to steal by tricks. If you like it, that's how somebody will say, nah, My man of God like this food. Okay, I'm going to buy this type of food. Don't persuade somebody. Don't persuade somebody. Don't persuade somebody. Don't persuade somebody. You must give me this. But listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Anything somebody takes from you out of persuasion, you are giving, you are sighing. You will not receive reward. You are giving it out of grudges, out of pain. If I don't give it to him now, he will complain about me. He will do this and this and that. <laughs> you better repent, to. Oh. You better repent, to. Oh. You better say, no, I will live to do the will of God. No, I will live to do the will of my master. I will live to do the will of him who has called me into the marvelous light. Remember, you are no more in darkness. Remember, you are no more in darkness. Remember, you are no more in darkness. You are now in the light and in the light of God. You are now in the light of the mighty one of Israel. We are talking about the signs of transformation. When these things are happening in your life, you know you are transformed. You are ready to do restitution immediately. But let me tell you, when you are not ready to restitute, when you are not ready to judge yourself, when you are not ready at all in any way to come back to yourself, then you are not transformed. A transformed life will immediately, gladly do all these things, instantly and immediately. Number four, your plans will change. That's a transformed life. Your plans will change. In Acts of the Apostle chapter 9, look at from verse 18. Acts of the Apostle Chapter 9 from verse 18. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forthward, and also, and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Look at verse 20. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue. That he is the son of God. Woo! Hallelujah. He was asked to go and kill. He was asked to go and arrest. He was asked to go and destroy. But what happened? Immediately he had a transformed life. Transformation came to his life. He that went to kill decided to preach. He that went to kill was turned to begin to preach the word of God. Listen to me, brethren. So many people go to oversee and commit over sin. Hey, I repeat, so many people go to oversee and commit over sin because this is a land full of compromise. Are you ready to say, God, my plans will change? Yes, let me go and do paper. Eh? Let me carry a white lady. We will wait. We get into contract marriage. Where did you see contract marriage in the Bible? No, let, let me just get my paper. Let me get my paper. And the constitution of the country will write that you have so, 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 so time where there's such a lady and you didn't call it a sin. You have unsettled case, so go and settle low. You have unsettled case, go and settle. You have a wife over there, you come to uh, your country and you pick another lady. Who are you deceiving? You got over sin and you committed over sin. May God show you mercy. 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 
We don't look on men. God told me, as you're going back, don't look on men. Don't look on their faces. Tell them the truth of the word of God. Tell them what they have done. Tell them that adultery is a sin. Fornication is a sin. When you are not wedded and you are befriending a girl, you are sleeping with her, it is a sin. It is unrighteousness. It is impurity. It is uncleanliness. God say, go, 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 and tell them that way. And that's what I'm doing to you right now. I am no more living my own life. I am living the life of he who has sent me to go and do his will. The life of he who has sent me to come and preach the word of God. And I'm doing the work of he who has sent me this time around. We are talking about be you transformed. You see what happened? I said, number four is that your plan will change. St. Paul was going, have your plan changed from bad to evil, uh, uh, from bad to good? Have your plan changed from bad to good? What is the purpose of going to oversee? To go and carry cocaine, to go and dupe a white man, to go and do this. But when you go there, you'll be arrested by Jesus. You go there and know that the primary purpose of going, you that is in Europe, you that is in London, you that is in the United States of America, your primary purpose of going there is to tell them the truth of the word of God. You are a missionary. God has sent you there. Before you talk of finances coming, before you talk of blessings and other things coming, do the work of God over there. Do the work of God over there. Do the work of preaching. Do the work of God with power and God will help you. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? I'm sounding this as a voice unto you. Your primary purpose of going there is to teach them the life. The white men brought us the gospel in the 18th century, in 17th century, and they went home and backslided. And God is sending you there as a missionary. You may think it is marriage that took you over there. You may think it is a husband that took you over there. No, God sent you there for you to go and open your mouth and tell the white men that brought the gospel two, three hundred years ago that they are backslidden from the truth they told you. Yes, like so many Africans have backslidden. They come with American, European way of administration, this and that and that. Let me tell you, God has no favorite that can commit a sin and get away with it. Mm -mm, he has no favorite. When you commit a sin, he will say you commit a sin. David he was God, a man after God said. But when he committed sin, what happened? God said, David have sinned though. Abraham was friend of God. When he told lie, God labelled it and said he lied. He has no favor that can commit sin and get away with it. If you commit sin, God will say you committed a sin. May God show us mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Very soon we are rounding up this message. But remember that it is said, be you transformed. Are you looking for transformation tonight? Have you been looking for unction? Are you at dry ground? God will pour mercy. Pour mercy like water on you. He will pour his glory upon you. He will pour his unction upon you. Anointing upon you. His grace. His life. His revelation. His wisdom. His knowledge. His understanding. His success power. God is going to pour it to you now. And you are going to see God. And see his power moving. Hallelujah. His awesome God has never changed. He cannot change. It is only, do you know, you that left your father land, you travel. It is only you that travel. God does not travel. Though. Before you travel, he has been there. When you went there, he said, welcome. Can you tell him, Lord, he, he redirect my step. Let me know why I'm in this country. Let me know why I came here. Let me know. And Jehovah Lord will manifest his power. Yes, your plans will change. My prayer is that anybody, anybody that have traveled abroad with a negative plan, may it change. Anyone in Africa here, where I'm talking from, that has a negative way of doing his thing, let there be a change in the mighty name of Jesus. Until the change come, the blessings will not come. Until the changes come, the blessings will not come. But the moment the, the changes come, oh, you will see mighty changes. You will see glorious changes. You will see holy changes. You will see excellent changes. And you will be on the laughing side. Number five. Remember I told you that I'm going to give you a sense of transformation. Number five, you will be zealous in spiritual things. No, 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 yes, you will be zealous in spiritual things, yes. You will be very, 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 very zealous in spiritual things. You will have zeal of God, you want to do it, but do you have zeal for God? Yay! You will be very, 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 very zealous for the things of God. Eh? Is it for God? Oh, you are there for God. You are remembering God. You are doing the work of God. You are doing this and that for God. Number five is that you will be zealous for the things of God. In Acts of the Apostle, chapter 5, verse 28. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 5, verse 28, saying, Did not we straight command you, strictly command you, that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem 
with your doctrine and this and intend to bring this man's blood upon us the Sahindrin, they were asking them this question didn't we want you don't preach jesus again they have harassed you many people have harassed you say don't come here with this your jesus when you come to this office make sure you don't preach jesus who told you that let me tell you where they don't need your jesus it means they don't need you at that place Mm, verse, verse, look at what Peter told them, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostle answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. That is zeal. When you are a transformed being, you said this head can be shut up, it can be cut up, chop, chop it off for Jesus. I will only say good evening here and say good morning in heaven because you know where you are going to. But when you are not transformed, when death comes, you say, ah, oh, oh, I don't want to die. You can compromise. Oh, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. But when you know who you are, when you are a born again child of God, yesterday I had a testimony, that, a story that shocked my life. Do you know the camp chairman that was beheaded in the northern part of Nigeria? Do you know that the man that beheaded him was a Christian that was converted to Islam? When that man said it yesterday, I was shocked. He said he was converted to Islam. They wanted to kill him. He said, no, I, 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 let, let me, let me, for this little word, how long are you living? How many years do you have here on earth? And the chapter of the earth will close. If you, let me tell you, if you can't die for what you are believing, your belief is not worth, you know, taking home. If you can't die for Jesus, it means that whatever thing you're believing for is not real. The person that killed the can chairman, it was a Christian, a child of God in Nigeria here. They told him, he convert, was converted to Islam. And they told him, we want you to demonstrate your faith. Or he said, eh, we want you to demonstrate your faith. Tell us that you believe strongly. The man said, try me. Try me, I will prove my faith. And immediately they gave him knife. He came and chopped off the head of a camp chairman. I said, kill your fellow Christian. You were one time a Christian. Tell them that you, you, you have been converted to rush. And he did that excellently and perfectly. He might be rejoicing, yes, I saved my life. But the Bible said, whosoever that save his life shall lose it. But whosoever that loses his life shall gain it. If that can man the head, can chairman, the head was chopped off. If you have been a Christian, a true Richard of God, he will be now in heaven rejoicing and dancing. And this man, his punishment will be waiting him. Unless he repents. Yes. I command you, you have zeal for God before. Your zeal was bubbling every time. But how scared? Health problems, troubles have so humbled you that you don't have zeal for God anymore. When they say, mm, I don't know, eh? I can't tell, eh? this and this and that. No, no, this is time to say, I want to come back to God. I've stressed this message. I said, I'm giving you eight points, okay? Then, you're, I told you that you'll be zealous for God. Number six, you will like to be in his presence. Oh, oh. Oh, whenever you live, you have transformed life, you will like to live in the presence of the Lord. You will never want his presence to leave you for one minute. You will always go in his presence and be in his presence and abide in his presence. Oh, God. Let's to live in your presence. Let your presence go with us. Do you know when the glory and presence of God is going with you, you will only be hearing the sound of God. And when the God is directed to you, the glory will channel the God to another direction. I was in Israel years ago. Do you know what happened? They had mass. All of a sudden, they made the noise and said, Hey, 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 hey. These people, they have released the Hamas. They have released, they have released, they have released. Oh my God, oh my God. They released a lot of bomb in the air. A lot of atomic hydrogen in the bomb. A lot of this uh, missile. A lot of missile. The person in the tower begin to signify people as said. He used the iron drone. Israel have a powerful something. That when they release all this missile in the air, they will draw it down and it will scatter them. The man handled the iron drone. The iron drone fell. He did it again. The iron drone fell. He did it again. The iron drone fell. The man said hey our 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 handmade instrument has failed us our handmade instrument has failed us what are we going to do what are we going to do he called the army and said go to a railway station that is where they targeted yes he called other people and say go somewhere again he said these are the two places they targeted they target okay 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 our our computer room our computer room is where they targeted and the railway all of a sudden, it all over. And the man on the tower signaled these people. They went there. He started asking them, how many casualties? How many people were killed? 
How many? And the people at the railway station said, there's no casualty here. Nobody died here. No bomb. No, uh, no, 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 nothing dropped here. He said, eh? Okay, let's get to our computer room, control house. They went to control room. He said, nothing happened, nothing happened. The man in the control tower started saying, hallelujah. The God of Israel is alive. The glory of Israel is alive. The power of resurrection is still alive. The man said, when they were releasing this in, when the iron throne of Israel fell, I saw a hand that came up and directed, and the hand was doing like this, and all the missile in the air, they went and they all landed in the sea. None got a target. When the glory of God is covering you, you're not afraid of dying premature death. His glory, remember, I said number six, that you would like to be in his presence. Look at what happened in Matthew chapter 7. Verse 4, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spoke, behold, bright of a shadow read them. Behold, a voice out of cloud, which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear you him. Look at what happened, verse 6. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them. Glory of God. You will not like to depart. Peter enjoyed his presence. The apostles enjoyed his presence. I don't want to go. I am not departing from his presence. Many people have departed from the presence of God. That is why their Christianity is a work hard Christianity. That's why their Christianity is a labor Christianity. That is why their Christianity is a die hard Christianity. They, they say, hey, if I don't do this thing, God will not do it for me. But I tell you now, may you come back to glory. May you, his presence follow you back. The moment his presence follows you back, hey, you will be moving and the glory will be doing things for you. You don't need to beg before money will come your way. You do not to beg people before favor will come your way because the presence of glory is upon your life. Hallelujah. 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 Number seven, you will not lack. Oh my God. When, the, when you are walking and when you are in transformed life, many people don't want to come to Christian or be born again children of God because they said, hey, if I do this now, I will lack this, I will lack this. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. You will not lack anything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will not lack anything. You will not lack anything. The moment you are in Christ Jesus, I tell you, it shall be well with you. Don't be afraid. I say, if I join this church, people, I will, you are not better than them. What are you lacking? The oh God they serve is the owner of gold and silver. The God they serve is owner of heaven and earth. Then what are you telling me they are going to lack? They won't lack anything, and you will not equally lack anything. My goodness, my God, they will not. You will not lack. You will not live in lack for anything. For anything, yes, there may be a time when the, the training period may come. Thing may work this way, but I tell you later, it shall be. Look at what the Bible said. It shall be well. Look at what the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 33 from verse 15. Look at what he, Isaiah 33, 15. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth the gain of oppressions. That shaketh his hands. Oh my God. Okay. His hands from holding of bribe. That stopped his ears from hearing of the blood. And shooted his eye from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be mutation of rocks. Bread shall be him. His water shall be sure. Hallelujah. You will not lack when you live a transformed life. He said your bread will be sure. Your protection will be sure. Let me tell you. If God give you a genuine money, he will protect you. If God give you a real money, the village, you are afraid of coming home. Let them not poison me. This and this and that and that. What is the power of poison? Why, why are you afraid of poison? It's only the demon that is invoked into that thing that will come and kill people. Yes, nothing is evil of his own. It is the evil hand that holds it that makes it evil. I, I'm afraid. Let them not poison me. You are far bigger than those demons. They cannot do you anything. Yes, you will not lack. I pray for you. You have been living in lack. You have been living in pains. You have been living borrowing to live. 
But I decree right now, any power that has been hindering you from being who God said you will be, get out of your life. Any power that has been hindering the progress of God in your life, the real success God is determining for you, get out now in the name of Jesus Christ. I release God's plenty and abundance upon you. Child of God that is no more living in sin, that is no more living in unrighteousness, receive plenty and abundance now. And let there be open doors of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my King. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Father. Yes, Isaiah chapter 33, from verse 15 through verse 16. The Bible says, your water is sure. It's waiting for you. Look, let me tell you. Because you walked away from him, God passed your food and kept your food that is far from you. When you get nearer him, he will direct you where your food is. He will direct you where your water is. He will direct you where your protection is. He will say, hey. I've been struggling in vain, oh, not knowing I was far from my maker, and my maker kept my food far from me, and I've been a struggling man all the while. No more struggling, because you are now transformed by the glory of God. Finally, point eight. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Point eight is that your garment will always be white. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8. Your garment will always be white. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8. It says, let your garment always be white. And may your head lack no oil. Because you have been transformed. You will wear a, trans, a, a, trans, a transformed, clean garment. And your head will not lack oil. Watching me now, is your head like an oil. May Jehovah pour new oil. May Jehovah pour new grace upon you. May Jehovah pour new unction. May Jehovah pour new anointing upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. As Jehovah pour this new unction, new glory, new power, new anointing, may his favor be upon your life. In the book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 15, the Bible, the word of God said, Revelation 16, 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Bless you, see. The washer and keep out his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. God wants to clothe you. You have been walking in shame, in disgrace. God wants to clothe you right now. Remember, we're talking about a transformed life. Be you transformed. Let me tell you, there are a lot of benefits in being transformed. Opening up that God will fill you up. Opening up and walking in the standard of God. Opening up and walking with God closely and you will hear him talk. Oh my God, being the person he created you to be on earth here. That's what it means to be transformed. Let me give you an example of transformed now before we pray together. And came one day, as I've been useless in my life, he started praying. He started going to evangelism. He started reading the Bible, the word of God. He was in fellowship. He said, God, on, on, I want to be on. Revival came in his life. When transformation comes, revival will come. And you will not only get revived, you will revive others. Do you know what happened? The man came home one day with the whole joy of the Holy Spirit in him, with the power and glory and the excellence of God. The man came home one day and said, <laughs> the wife was cooking. He wanted to help the wife a little, a bit, a bit, and say, no, let me go, darling. This food may be ready in 30 minutes time. Let me go home and stay with Jehovah a little bit. Just uh, let me know when the food is ready. And the man, because he was transformed, he connected heaven automatically. As transformer will connect high tension without problem. That was the way the man, he was a transformer here, and heaven is the high tension. The power from on high came on him. The man started praying. For 30 minutes he was still praying. Two hours, one hour he was still praying. Two hours he was praying. He was lambastering into Makanda and Makudo Shayama. The glory was upon him. Anointing was upon him. He left the earth and then he went up to glory. He was in the throne of Jehovah. Look, let me tell you, when you have a transformed land, you don't have struggle in praying in your life. You open your mouth, the thing begins to flow. And all of a sudden, what happened? Immediately, the wife finished cooking. He sent the daughter, the first daughter, go and call your daddy. The first daughter went, opening the door, the anointing carried her down. She started sleeping. He sent the son. The son went there, the anointing carried him down. He started sleeping. He, he sent the other one. The three, of, the three children went there, the anointing carried them, and they started sleeping on the ground. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Three of them were on the ground. The woman waited and said, ah, what's happened? The woman wanted to go and see what was happening. The anointing carried the woman and the woman was on the ground. The woman started sleeping and the man was still on the throne of grace. 
Hey, transformation of life. Oh God, transform somebody tonight. After three hours, after four hours, the man thought he was praying for 30 minutes and he came back again and saw the wife and the children lying beside. Ah, when did this one happen? He Every intercessor is a spiritual importer. He imparts spiritual into the physical. The man said, why are my children lying down? And they started telling the ordeal. I didn't even know when you fall. I said, this is the best place to sleep. Look, let me tell you. When the glory of God come upon you, and the anointing power is resting on you, and you are living a holy, sanctified, and a dedicated life, you become a spiritual commander. Jesus become the feed marshal. He makes you a commander here on earth. Is it not time to say, God, I'm thirsty of your glory? Is it not time to say, God, I need more of you? I've lived this my wicked life. I've this, lived this self life, the way I carry myself and the way I do things. No, enough of this. Shall we pray together? Lord, I thank you. Oh, can you open your mouth, my brother, my sister? Can you open your mouth there and begin to pray? Can you say, God, you are talking to me? Can you say, God, it is me that you are talking to? Can you say, God, it is me that own this message? You knew me. You know all about me. You know I need a transformation. I need this transformation. I need this transformation. I need this transformation. I need this transformation. Lord, you are talking about me. God, touch me. Any part of my life that has not been transformed, have my eye. My eyes is still watching worldly music. My eyes is still, my ear is still tingling. For worldly music, Lord, transform my ear. God, I'm still looking this horror film, sir. Transform my eyes, oh God. My brain is still thinking of Lord, transform my brain. Can you say, God, from the crown of my hair to the sole of my feet? Transform them. Transformation starts from your from your leg. It goes up to your head. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. When your transformation starts from your feet. He regard your feet, you will not be walking anyhow. Oh my God, as I'm talking to them now, as we're praying together now, transform us. When your transformation gets to your knee, you can pray. When it gets to your belly, oh, the Holy Ghost will live in you. When it gets to your heart, God will begin to talk to you. When it gets to your mouth, you begin to speak the word of God. When transformation gets to your eye, you begin to see spiritual things and the deep things. When it gets to your ear, you begin to hear from God. When it gets to your brain, you begin to think like God. Don't you think you need transformation now? Oh God, I need your transformation. In the name of Jesus. Father, look at these brethren. Look at your daughter. Look at your son. In need of you. Seriously in need of you. Look, I can see him. I can see her kneeling down before you now. Calling upon you and say, Lord, I transform my life. I can hear them saying, I don't want to go to hell. Transform me. Transform me. Daddy, do this transformation. Daddy, do this transformation. That thing that been hindering him. You did something years ago. Your mind has been condemning your dad. The other said, I tell you, he has forgiven you. The Lord said, I've forgiven you. Remove it out of your heart. That he has cleaned the wound and healed you. That you should forgive yourself. He has forgiven you. Lord, I thank you for your grace and mercy, for your mighty hand of honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Right now, by the authorities in the word of God, may God help us to understand you. May you be transformed now. Let the heavy load in your heart be off. And may the glory of God fill you. Let that spirit of fear get out of you. And let the glory of Jesus come upon you. Now and permanently forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. His glory is upon you. His anointing is upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are called to do the work of God. But you are struggling with God. Come on, tell God you are the winner of this battle. I can't struggle with you anymore. The years I struggle. Where am I? Remember you will die, but God doesn't die you. Father, let let there be transformation. Let there be transformation in this life now. In the mighty name of Jesus. From today, his glory come upon you. You are you said you are traveling, but you are telling lies. Father, let the truth be in this life. No more defending yourself. You will speak the truth of God. And the glory of God will be upon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Supposing you hear this word now. And you have not given your life to Jesus. Do you know it's a golden opportunity? Can you say, Lord Jesus? Come into my life. Be my king and God. Save my soul. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Give me grace to live for you and for you alone. Amen. Father, as many that confess this, give them grace to be your children. Give them grace to live for you. Give them grace to live holy life. Give them grace to live clean life. Give them grace in the name of Jesus. Let the mighty hand of God come upon you. Let the life of grace be upon your life. That you live for God and for God alone. Now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we decree. Are you sick? 
in any part of your body. The same God that transforms life is the same God of healing. The same God that transforms life is the same God of deliverance. Oh, my King and God, everlasting Father, I touch that place that, that sickness is. Feel free to call us or WhatsApp us. My WhatsApp number is here. Go to YouTube and you see these messages. My WhatsApp number is here. Yes, my Facebook name, Damian Nikekwe, is also here. Yes, just connect us, contact us. We are at your service. Even if you drop message, we will make time to reply you by the divine grace of God. Are you sick anywhere? Jehovah will heal you. Oh, that headache, that headache, that in your head. I pray for you, having that severe headache, thou headache, get out of that head in the name of Jesus. That eye that begin to pour water, mostly when you look at object, uh, uh, you know, bright objects. Eyes, the iris, the lens, I command you right now, the retina part of your eye, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Any part of your body you're having pain, that thing moving up in your belly, I bind it in Jesus' name. I pull it out of your belly. I release you for healing. Receive healing from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Receive healing. Receive deliverance. Receive miracle of God. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed now. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. It is well with you. His glory is upon you. Thank you, Father, for the mighty answer. I cover in the blood of Jesus. Peace of God is upon you. In Jesus' mighty name, I decree. Amen. I saw somebody going down in spirit. You're having debts and you fear it cannot be paid. Lord Jesus, pay this debt. Pay this debt. Jesus takes over your debt. He pays your debt. The devil has been whispering for, to your heart that it is not possible. It is not possible for your situation to change. It is not possible where you are now to change. It is not possible for you to leave that country you are. You hate that country where you are now. You hate it and you want to make a move. And the fact that it is not possible, it is possible. It is possible. It is possible. I command the power of possibility, sir. The power of resurrection to make you now. Let your peppers be ready. Let everything around you be ready. As you relocate from where you are now to another land, in the name of Jesus, you be a missionary for Jesus over there. Just go tonight and say, Jesus, as I relocate, I shall serve you in honor and truth. As I go to my new destination, I will serve you and serve you and serve you. Lord, we thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to tell you I love you all and Jesus loves you all. Don't be discouraged. You are going somewhere. The Messiah is coming. Our master is coming. He will reward each and every one of us. According to our dealings. May he reward us in righteousness. May he never say, depart from me. I never know you. You walk out of iniquity. Rather, may he welcome us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. I remember your brother Damien. Yes, I remember your brother Damien. Supposing you want to call, uh, you WhatsApp us, feel free. At least if you WhatsApp us, we can give you appointment to call when you want to call. It is well. It is well. It is well. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless you. Bye. I love you all. Bye.